Welcome to our lesson for today. We have circle. Circle is one of the four types of conic sections. We have parabola, ellipse, hyperbola, and we also have circle. So let's focus on the definition of the circle and to determine the standard form of the equation of the circle. So we have here our definition. A circle is a set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a point on a plane. Now the fixed point is called the center and the distance from the center to any point of the circle is referred to as the radius. So when we talk about circle, if you have any points here, for example, you take any point, you have here a point P, or a point here, we call it as P1, or we take a point here, we call it as P2, or any point, or this one, this point P3, or even this point P4. Now, any of the points we took on this circle, the distance from that point to the center will always be the same. Okay, so for example, the distance between P1 and C is constant. The distance between P2 and C is constant. And so on with P3 and P4. And that distance is called the radius of the circle, where C is the center of the circle. So when we talk about equidistant, the distance will always be equal. Now, let's try to derive the equation of the circle based on definition. So since it is, now since the radius is the distance between the center to any point, so we take a point P here with coordinates X, Y, and we have here our center with coordinates H, K. So we know that the distance between C and P is called the radius. So using the distance formula, distance is equal to the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 raised to 2 plus the square of y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So now, what we want is to determine the distance. Okay, so distance is defined as the radius of the circle. So we have here r is equal to the square root of, so suppose we take p as our second point, and C as our first point. So we have here X minus H, this is raised to two plus the square of Y minus K raised to two. So we square both sides of the equation, we get R squared. This is equal to the square of X minus H plus the square of Y minus K. And this is the standard form of the equation of the circle. So we have here our formal definition of a circle. So when we talk about circle, given that you have a fixed point with coordinate C and the radius is R, take note, radius is distance, meaning R should be positive. Now, if P is any point in the circle, as derived earlier, this is our standard form of the equation of our circle. But notice that we have here few observations. If R squared is less than zero, then the equation has no graph. Why is it? Because we define radius as distance, and distance is always positive. So when we talk about positive r, then r squared should always be positive. So meaning, for example, we have here the square of x minus 1 plus the square of y plus 2. If this is equal to negative 100, this means that your r squared is less than 0. So since r squared or negative 100 is less than zero, this equation has no graph. But if, for example, you have here the square of x minus 1 plus the square of y plus 2, 
if this is equal to zero, then the equation represents a circle or a point rather. The equation represents a point because there is no distance between C and P. That is just a mere point on your partition plane. Now, if for example, we have here the square of X minus one plus the square of Y plus two, this is equal to 100. As you observe here, R squared is equal to 100 and 100 is greater than zero. 100 is positive, which means that the equation represents a circle. So again, if R squared is less than zero, it has no graph. If R squared is equal to zero, it represents us a point, which is a degenerative case of a conic circle or a conic section rather. If R squared is greater than zero, then the equation represents a circle. Now let's try to solve this one. So for letter A, let's try to identify the standard form of the equation of the circle. So the center is at the origin with coordinates 0, 0. And of course, we have a radius which is equal to 5. So since the center has coordinates hk, it just means that our h is 0 and our k is also equal to 0. So substituting it to our equation, we have the square of x minus h plus the square of y minus k. This is equal to r squared. Substituting it, we have x minus 0 raised to 2 plus the square of y minus 0. This is equal to our r is 5. So natay 5 squared. So x minus 0 is x raised to the power of 2. You get x squared. y minus 0 is y raised to the power of 2. You get y squared. And this is equal to the square of 5, which is equal to 25. And this is the standard form of the equation of the circle given the center at the region with radius 5. Now let's proceed with letter B. So if you have a center with coordinates negative 2 and 5, and then you have a radius of square root of 3, so we have the center with coordinates hk, so our h is negative 2 and our k is 5. So of course, our radius is square root of 3. Substituting it to our equation, so we have x minus h. Our h is negative 2. This is raised to the power of 2 plus y minus k minus our k is 5. This is raised to the power of 2 and this is equal to r squared. So meaning you have the square of square root of 3. Now simplifying this, you have x minus negative 2, we get x plus 2. This is raised to the power of 2 plus y minus 5 all raised to 2. And this is equal to the square of the square root of 3 is equal to 3. And this is now the standard form of the equation of the circle. Now let's proceed with letter C. So if a circle has a diameter with endpoints A and B, so the distance between A and B there is called the diameter. So meaning at the middle here, at the midpoint, we call it the center. So the distance between A and C, we call that as R, or the distance between C and B is still the radius. So now, to solve for or to determine the standard form of the equation of the circle, we need to identify first the center. So the center is the midpoint between A and B. So to solve for it, uh, recall that we have here the formula for the midpoint, x sub 2 plus x sub 1 over 2, y sub 2 plus y sub 1 over 2. And this is equal to, let's just substitute here our values. So we have here 4 plus 8 over 2. And then we have here 5 plus negative 7 over 2. 
So simplifying this, 4 plus 8, you get 12 over 2. 5 plus negative 7, you get negative 2 over 2. So we have 12 over 2, we get, we get 6. Negative 2 over 2, we get negative 1. Now solving, this is now our center. The center with coordinates 6 and negative 1. Now let's try to solve for the radius. So our radius is equal to the square root of, so we have here, for example, we choose the point A. Or you can choose point B, whichever the case. So here, we take point A. So we have here 4 minus 6 raised to the power of 2. We have here, this is the distance formula. We are using the distance formula. So that is x sub 2 minus x sub 1, all raised to 2, plus the square of y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So again, we have here 5 minus negative 1. This is raised to 2. So this, is, this would be equal to the square root of, we have 4 minus 6. 4 minus 6 is negative 2 raised to the power of 2 plus. We have 5 minus negative 1, so that would be 5 plus 1. So 5 plus 1 is 6, so you get 6 squared. And this is equal to uh, the square of negative 2, you get 4 plus the square of 6 is 36. Okay, so you add up these two values, you get square root of 40. Now let's solve or determine the standard form of the equation of the circle. So the standard form of the equation of the circle, we have here x minus h raised to 2 plus y minus k, this is all raised to 2, which is equal to r squared. Now this time, our x and y here is any point on the circle. So we, that would be a variable, x. And then you have h because we already identified our center. So our h is 6 and our k is negative 1. So we have here x minus 6, this is raised to 2 plus y minus negative 1 raised to 2 is equal to r squared. So our, our radius, we have square root of 40, and this is raised to the power of 2. So simplifying this, you get x minus 6 all raised to 2 plus y minus negative 1, we get y plus 1 all raised to 2. And this is equal to the square of the square root of 40, you get 40. And that is the standard form of the equation of our circle with endpoints A and B. So again, if the given are the endpoints of your diameter, all you need to do is to calculate first for the midpoint, which will serve as the center, and then solve for the distance between a, an endpoint to the center. Now here, let's determine the standard form of the equation of the circle and its center and radius. So how do we do that? This is the general form of the standard, uh, the general form of the equation of the circle. So if you have that, all you need to do is to use completing the square. So first things first, we group our terms having the same variables. So we have here x squared minus 6x, group them together. And then we have here y squared. And of course, we have equal to 7. So this time, we use completing the square. Because this is a binomial, we must add something on this group to make it a perfect square trinomial. So we have here x squared minus 6x plus 9. So we added 9 
on the left hand side of the equation, then nine should be added also on the right hand side of our equation. So next thing is we factor out this trinomial. So the factor of x squared minus six x plus nine, you get x minus three. This is all raised to two plus y squared. Now take note, we did not add any value on the y because this is a square, a perfect square already. So nothing should be added to y. And this is equal to simplify. We have seven plus nine, you get 16. So this is the standard form of the equation of the circle. Now let's identify the center. Again, the center has coordinates h, k. So here we have our h as positive three and our k is zero. We have h and we also have k. Take note that this can be written as the square of x minus three plus the square of y minus zero. This is equal to four squared, okay? So using our equation or standard form of the equation of our circle, we have here x minus h raised to two plus y minus k raised to two. This is equal to r squared. So meaning you have there our three is our h and k is zero. We have that. And then lastly, our radius that is equal to four. Okay, next. We have here 2x squared plus 2y squared plus 12x minus 8y minus 3 is equal to 0. So as mentioned earlier, we need to group our terms. But before that, since the numerical coefficient of x squared and y squared are both equal to 2, then we can just simply multiply the equation by one half. So by multiplying it by one half, we have here one two x squared times one half, you get x squared. Two y squared times one half, you get y squared. 12x times one half is six x. Negative eight y times one half, you get negative four y. And negative three, times one half, you get negative three halves, and that is equal to zero. So this time we regroup our terms. So grouping x squared and six x, okay, group the terms according to the variables. So note, we have here y squared minus four y, and this is equal to three halves. We already, uh, we used addition property of equality, we added positive three halves to both sides of the equation. So this time, we use completing the square. So we added nine on the x to make it a perfect square trinomial. And we added positive four on this side to make it again a perfect square trinomial. So since we added both nine and four on the left-hand side of our equation, the nine and four should be added also on the right-hand side of our equation. Next thing, we factor out this trinomial and the factor, the square of x plus 3. Here, the factor of this trinomial is x minus 2 raised to 2. And this is equal to 29 over 2. We only simplified this one. We added 3 halves plus 9 plus 4. You get 29 over 2. So simplifying this, we have here x plus uh, the square of x plus 3 plus the square of y minus 2 is equal to the square of the square root of 29 over 2. To identify our radius and our center. Now take note. The equation x minus h, this is raised to 2, plus we have y minus k raised to 2 equal to r squared which means that our x, our h here, this 
x plus 3 there, the x plus 3 squared can be written as x minus negative 3 all raised to 2, which is why we have x minus h. So again, our h is negative 3 and our k is positive 2. We get our center with coordinates hk, so our h is negative 3 and our k is positive so that is how we transform a general equation to its standard form. Now let's try this. Let's try to find the errors in the solution. So as you can see here, the given is x squared plus y squared plus 8x minus 6y is equal to 0. So what we did here, we group our terms according to the variable. So we have x squared plus 8x plus you have your y squared minus 6y is equal to zero. As of this case, correct pa. And then we have here using addition, using completing the square, we added 16 here and we added also nine here. So since nine and 16 are added on the left-hand side, we get 16 and nine here. So on this part, there is no error. Next, we factor out this trinomial. So the factor, the square of x plus 4. And the factor here is not x plus uh, y plus 3, but rather the plus here should be minus because the middle term on this trinomial is minus or negative. So the final answer should be the square of x plus 4 plus y, the square of y minus 3 is equal to 25. That should be our solution. Okay, so let's have this example again. Number two, we have a center with coordinates negative 5 and 9 and radius is 6. The standard equation is x minus 5 or raised to 2 plus the square of y minus 9 minus 36 is equal to 0. Let's check. Take note that the formula is x minus h. This is raised to 2 plus the square of y minus k is equal to r squared. So if h is negative 5 and our k is 9, then it should be x minus negative 5. This is raised to 2 plus we have y minus 9 all raised to 2 and this is equal to 6 squared. x minus negative 5 gives us x plus 5 raised to the power of 2 plus y minus 9 raised to the power of 2 and this is equal to 36. If we want to simplify this, just for it to form like this one, then it should it will become x plus 5 raised to 2 plus the square of y minus 1 minus 36 is equal to 0. So the error is on this part of the equation. It should be plus, not minus. Okay, next, for number three, let's try this one. We have here converting the standard form to general form. So as you can see, we have the standard form here, standard form. All we need to do is to expand the binomial. So using this expansion, we have the square of x minus three. The expansion should be x squared minus six x should be plus nine. Why is it? Because you have here x minus 3 squared can be written as x minus 3 times x minus 3. So using distributive property, x times x, you get x squared. x times negative 3, you get negative 3x. And here, negative 3 times x is again negative 3x. 
Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Simplifying that, you get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So this should be plus, not minus. Here, the square of y plus 2 is y squared plus 4y plus 4. Correct. And then this is equal to 3 squared. 3 squared is equal to 9. So let's try to simplify this further. So here, we just simply... Combine like terms. So x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 4y. And then this one, this is not negative 9 anymore, but it should be plus 9. And then you have your plus 4. And of course, the 9 here is now negative 9 on the left-hand side. So we have your positive 9, negative 9, which gives you 0. So 9 plus 4. Minus 9 gives you 4. Indeed. So you have your plus 4. Okay. So again, this should be x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 4y plus 4 is equal to 0. And this is now the general form of the equation of the circle. And that ends our lesson for today. Hope you learned and happy solving. Thank you for listening, everybody.